All right. Who knows why music was playing? Attention. What? Attention. Attention? OK, maybe. What else? Get who fired up. Get who fired up. Boys. OK, who else? You. Me. I got fired up. I was up at 4 a.m. this morning thinking about this presentation. I went to work out, pumping my music up, thinking about what I'm going to talk about. Do you guys do that before games? You listen to music, you get yourself fired up. Well, so do I. I think it's really important. And you guys can laugh, you can chuckle, you can do whatever you want. But my goal for this presentation is I want to change somebody's life. And I may not change their life today. Actually, as a matter of fact, I won't change their life today. But I might change their life 10 years from now when something happens. Or five years from now when you decide, you know what, maybe hockey's not for me anymore. Or 30 years from now when something happens in your marriage. I hope you remember this presentation. That's the goal that I have for today. OK? So first off, a little bit about myself. I played hockey as well and came to the US to go to college and play hockey. And I first went to the University of Maine. And I was there for a year and a half. Got in my first game, really pumped up, fired up. A week later, team breakfast. My alarm didn't go off. Legendary Sean Walsh, some of the older guys may know who that is. I'm like, freak out. I'm missing team breakfast. It was game day. I show up at the team breakfast during the coach's talk 20 minutes late. Guess how many more games I played at the University of Maine? Zero. I walked up to him after, and I said, Coach, I'm really sorry. My alarm didn't go off. He said, you should be sorry for yourself. So, Oki, I saw you walk in late. It's your team. Right? I remember last year in Grand Rapids with Kurt's team, two kids showed up late for breakfast. Who was part of that group? You right? First period, didn't sit. It's a life lessons that you learn that make you stronger, right? Life lessons I learned in hockey made me stronger as a man, made me stronger as a business person, and I still apply those lessons today. How many of you guys have seen that I'm launching a new book? You guys see that? I'm trying to be a social media star, I could use some tips from you guys. The book's called The $100 Million Journey. What is this book about? Does anybody know what this book's about? Anybody? It's about failure. It's about failure. People think that I have $100 million sitting in my bank account. I don't have $100 million sitting in my bank account. That's the revenue of a company. There's $100 million companies that lose money, by the way. This book, the guy who reviewed the book for me, a, a powerful business guy that's a mentor to me, he said, a powerful and candid read about turning failure into success. Because we all fail. Five years ago, next month, I was fired from a company I founded. 15 years of building a company. 500 employees across the globe. We were in the hockey business too, by the way. And I got fired. I brought in some investors, didn't work out. They kicked me out the door. I'm broken, shattered, absolutely shattered. Some of you guys were at Quebec Pee Wee tournament. We went up to that event. Good time, Deke? Yep. Right? I was broken at that event. I lost everything I built for 15 years, five years ago. You're going to learn today what I had to do to pick myself up off the pavement and go rebuild a company and find success the right way. Because it doesn't matter if it's business. You thirsty? Yeah, you can drink. I'm just kidding. It doesn't matter if it's business, hockey, school, doesn't really matter. We all go through ups and downs. Okay? But here's what's most important for you guys. This is all you guys care about. And I can only speak to the 08s and the 09s right now. What's my record after giving a talk to you guys? Do you guys win or lose? 100% of the time. So you guys better not screw this up. Because you guys have some big games today and tomorrow, and I expect 100% wins from this group. Okay, That's another goal of mine. So I want to talk about the science of success, the science of the mind. Okay. How do airplanes fly? OK? What? We don't know. Exactly. But it's scientifically proven. They do fly. 
right? Why do things float? How does gravity work? This is science. You learn this from our teachers here at SPA. That's what science is. But guess what? There's also a science to how this works, and it's proven. It's absolutely proven how the brain works. The problem is there's nobody in here who knows how it works. Nobody. How's that possible? Because it's scientifically proven. Okay? Well, I'll tell you why. Well, actually, even if I tell you why, here's the problem. None of you are going to listen. That's the first problem. Okay? So do me a favor. Stand up if you're a hockey player. Stand up if you're a hockey player. Or a coach. Sorry. Coach or teacher. Okay? Now, you see this is 100% of the people I'm talking to. If you're a baseball player, please stand up. Thanks, Ken. If you're, if you're just here and don't, just, you're just here, stand up, okay? If your jersey number, regardless of the sport you play, has an, the number eight in the number, stay standing. Everybody else, sit down. You got your number, Timo? You got double eight. Okay. So, I don't know, I tried to guess. So the, the percentage of people that are still standing hopefully is around 5%, is the only percentage that's going to get anything I'm talking about today. The other 95% of you are going to completely forget what I talked about. You don't give a care. You're just going to forget about it and go on with your life. 5%, maybe number eights, number fives, doesn't really matter. You guys sit down. Are going to get what I'm talking about. So it really sucks that I'm talking to 120 of you guys, and only 5% are going to get it. Only five, six, seven people are going to get it. And those are the people that I hope at some point in their life, this will change their life. That's, pure, that's what I'm trying to accomplish. So if you guys want to do a little bit better than that, you got to listen. Here's the problem. This is not a hockey player problem, a student problem. This is a life problem. 40% of you aren't even listening to me right now. You're not even listening. Kurt back there is thinking about his power play. Ms. Turcotte's thinking, is laughing at what I just said, not even, thinking, not even listening to what I just said. Cam's thinking about the girls, whether she Snapchatted him or not. Right? You guys might be thinking, oh, am I going to play good today? It's a big game. Oh, I'm nervous. I know what Philip's thinking about. He's, already, he's thinking about saves in his, his mind. Right? Metsis is wondering what the hell I'm talking about. You guys are wondering when I'm going to stop talking. What time your next practice is. Okay, I heard it. I get it. Enough. Shut up. All these, brain, all these conversations are going around, but only 40% of you are actually listening to me. That's why of the 40% that are listening, only a certain percentage of that are actually going to get what I'm talking about. So that's pretty sad. That's just human nature, by the way. I could be talking to the most you know, smartest people in the world, only 40% would still be listening to me. So dial it in a little bit, because if I can move 40% to 50%, that'd be making me really happy today. Because what I'm about to share with you guys I shared last week, or this past week in Austin, Texas, in front of 50 high-powered entrepreneurs and CEOs. I share, I, I share it, as many people I can share it with, I'm going to share it with. It's in my book. I talk about it in the book. It's all up here. Everything is up here. And I'm going to teach you guys today, if you want to know, the secret to success. It's pretty simple. It's so simple that people don't even do it. But I'll share it with you. Okay? So first off, teachers, you can't answer. Who knows what the difference is between the conscious mind and the subconscious mind? Who knows the difference? Somebody try. Come on. Subconscious and conscious mind. Ah, okay. Fantastic. So what's the conscious mind? What's the opposite? You have to think about it. Okay. How many of you guys, when you get dressed for hockey, actually think about tying your skates versus you just tie them? Next thing you know, you're on the ice. Right? I don't remember tying my skates. I just, I just tied them because you tie them 10 times a day. Do you guys think about tying your skates? Really? Do you think about chewing gum? Did you think about this morning, what do I need to do? No, you knew you were coming to school. Things just happen automatically, right? Conscious thinking is when you really have to make a decision and think about things. But let me ask you this. I'll add the teachers in this one and the coaches. What percentage of today is subconscious? You're not even thinking about versus conscious. What percentage of every day is subconscious? Some numbers. Okay, keep going. Oh, getting closer. 
95%. Who got that? Dude, you're a rock star. 95% of everything you do every day is subconscious. You do it without thinking. Without thinking. And what if I told you there was a way you could train your subconscious mind through the science of the mind to actually do the right things to achieve success versus the wrong things to go the other way? Does that make sense? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to you guys today. And by the way, I'm not just talking to you guys. I'm talking to the teachers. I'm talking to the coaches. I'm talking to everybody. This applies to everybody. This is not a hockey thing. This is a life thing. But it works in hockey, too. So. Here's what we're going to go through first, a little exercise, OK? C, T, F, A, R. I don't know how you need to remember this. Does anybody have the initial CT in here? Anybody? There's no CTs anywhere? Who, huh? Connecticut. Connecticut, OK, perfect. Connecticut is far. Connecticut far. Just remember that, Connecticut far, OK? So I'm going to go through these one by one. Circumstance, OK? What is a circumstance? Does anybody know what that is? Situation. A situation, OK. What about the situation? What's a circumstance? OK? Am I talking right now? That's a circumstance. Uh, are we in a building? Yes. It's a fact. It's an absolute fact, indisputable. Is today a good day? It's not a circumstance. That's an opinion. You may think it's a good day. I may think it's a bad day. That's not an opinion. Are we going to play good today? Is that a circumstance? No. no. It has to be a fact. OK? So the fact is, I'm talking. Let's just start with that example. The next one is thoughts. What thoughts do you have about me talking? OK? Somebody over there thinks my voice is annoying. Somebody over here thinks, oh, this sounds pretty interesting. Somebody over here is like, what the hell is he talking about? I don't even understand them. Right? So I'm talking. My sis is like, what is he talking about? Feeling. What's a feeling? Anybody have an opinion of what a feeling is? How did you feel when I said, you thirsty? How did that make you feel? Good. Singled out, right? Put on the spot, embarrassed, whatever. He felt something. Do you guys have feelings? How does it feel when the coach benches you? Not good. How does it feel when you give up a turnover and they put the puck in the back of your net and you lose the game? How does that feel? How does it feel when you win a championship? You guys know what feelings are? Right? The 2018, you, your mantra was play for that feeling. Right? Feeling. So the circumstances I'm talking, the thoughts are Matisse doesn't understand what I'm saying, and the feeling is he's like, this is kind of boring. I wish I could go on the ice right now because I don't understand a word he's saying. That's his feeling. He's like, this sucks. Right? Or he's like, you know what? I want to practice my English, so I'm going to listen more. That's my feeling. You understand how a feeling could go either way? When you lose a game, your feeling could be, oh, we suck. Or it could be, you know what? We're going to get better tomorrow in practice. That's a feeling, right? Action. What do you do from the feeling? Right? So I'm talking. Mitsis doesn't really understand what I'm talking about. He's feeling a little like I really don't know what he's saying, and it's kind of not making me feel really good. But now he has to take an action. Give me an example of a good action and a bad action that Matisse could take right now. You could pay attention better. That's a good action. He could pay attention better. Or what's the other one? Check out. He could be like, I don't understand, so I'm not even going to try. This sucks. Where's my phone? That's the action. Result. So Matisse pays more attention. What's the ultimate result of that? Gets more out of it. He learns English better, right? What's the, what's the result if he doesn't listen? Checks out, starts going on his phone. What's, doesn't gain anything. Doesn't learn any more English. Doesn't learn what we're talking about. OK? 
Okay? So let's go through an example. Let's bring this to hockey talk for a second. Okay? Circumstance. Circumstance. Right? You're on the third line. Fact. You're not on the power play. Fact. Whatever it is, doesn't really matter. You start thinking, ooh, hmm, I'm not really sure the coach likes my game. Right? How does that make you feel? <sighs> I suck. What is your action? I don't know if I want to play hockey anymore. I'm not going to work as hard because coach doesn't like me anyway. What's the result? You don't go anywhere. Same situation. You're on the third line. You're not on the power play. What's the thought going in your mind? Same thought. The same thought is, I don't think the coach really likes me. He doesn't see my game. He doesn't see my value here, obviously, because I'm here. I'm not on the power play. I don't understand what's going on. Same thought. Where does it start changing? How you feel about it, right? Are you going to do anything about it, right? What action are you going to take? You're going to work harder or are you going to pout? Are you going to get bitter or are you going to get better? Are you going to go talk to the coach? Oh, there's a novel idea. Hey, coach, I've been having these feelings. I've been having these thoughts. I'm a little concerned that you don't see the value of my game. Can we talk about it? Is there anything I should be doing differently? Is there, that's a pretty good action, right? Then the coach walks in the lobby one day. He's walking to the concourse. He's like, oh, there's Jimmy working on his whatever. Ah, that's impressive. Comes in the next day. Oh, there's Jimmy working on whatsoever. Guess what happens when a player gets hurt on the power play? What do you think's in the coach's mind? Jimmy, here's your shot. By the way, guys, that's going to happen the rest of your life. I don't care how good you are. I don't care how good you are. You're always fighting for your spot and always trying to work your way into the lineup, always trying to work your way into life, into success, into business, and everything else. Connecticut is far. Circumstance, thoughts, feelings, action, and result is the key to everything. Absolute key to everything. OK? So can somebody articulate to me and be open and honest and vulnerable an example of when they have had a negative thought or reaction and result as a part of maybe having some negative thoughts and feelings about a situation? Can somebody give me an example? And if you have to make it up, just make it up. Can somebody give me an example of this? No? No one's had ever any negative thoughts and maybe didn't do the right thing? You guys are, you, really? Nobody? OK, somebody give me a positive example. Can somebody give me a positive example? Wow, you guys, don't, I'm going to pick on somebody. You don't talk soon. Mick. <laughs> as soon as I said I'm going to pick on somebody, you start going. Happy birthday, Mick. Give me, give me a positive or negative example of how the, you've seen this in your life. You don't know? OK, so you're one of the 60% that hasn't been listening. Right? Power play time. OK. So the circumstance is you're not getting enough power play time or too much? Not enough. Not enough. What do you, what do you think about that? Why, why, like what, when you think about that, what do you talk to yourself about? What, is it, what do you say? OK. And what feeling does that drive? OK. And what action have you taken? Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's not the right action, right? And what's the result? Are you getting more power play time? Ah. Ah, OK. Just a perfect example. Things are going to go wrong in your life and everything else, and this is the key. CTFAR, OK? Now, this is a repetitive one for some guys that have seen this before. But let me give you an example of what your season's going to look like. Your season's going to look like this. Right? Ups and downs, bad games, losses, blah, 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 blah. It's going to look like this the whole time. Guess what? What's your hockey career going to look like? I, same thing? What's your life going to look like? Does anybody do that? That's what it feels like. You see movie stars, you see these professional athletes, like, oh, they got it so easy. That's not what happens. I'm telling you right now. This is it. And here's the problem. Here's the biggest problem of all. Most people, 
have no clue what to do when they are here. It's called the transition learning curve. And when you're at the bottom of the curve, it's called the crisis of meaning. That's where people don't know how to get back up here, and that's the science of the mind. That's how you have to really know how to get from here to here. It's the learning curve, right? So to take it a little bit slower for you guys, let me show you the real example of this in real time of a specific scenario. And I'm going to use the 2009 team as an example. Okay? They all show up to start the season, and they are here. Does anybody remember what UO stands for? Uninformed optimism. That's fantastic. Uninformed optimism. Okay? Think about your first day here. Check-in day. This is exciting. I got some new jerseys. I got a locker room. I got a new stall. I got a new coach. This coach is going to love me. This is awesome. Everything's fantastic. I got a new hoodie. Oh, look at these backpacks. These backpacks rock better than last year's. Look at the jerseys. Ah, oh, hey. Ah. Everybody's so fired up. It's uninformed optimism. What does uninformed mean? Go again. You have no clue what you're about to go into. You're just really excited. All the teammates are fantastic. Everybody loves me. Teachers are awesome. The schoolwork is easy. Whatever. You just have no clue what you don't know, but you're really excited about it. OK? What happens next? Right? You come here. And this is UP. You can't answer this time. What is it? What's UP? Pessimism. Uninformed pessimism. The person sitting next to you is a little bit of a jerk. The coach just yelled at you in practice. You lost your first game. You lost your first three games. You're not on special teams. The work's actually pretty hard. Maybe the teacher doesn't like me. Cafeteria food could be a little bit better. You start thinking all these thoughts, but you're uninformed. You still don't have a clue, but things aren't as exciting as the first time. Right? And you keep coming. Why? Why do you keep coming this way, do you think, ultimately? Because you're having conversations with your mind, and you're talking to yourself, and you start questioning different things. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have went to spot. Maybe I should have went over here. Whatever. Right? And you come down to this area here, right, at the, at the trough here, and it's a crisis of intervention or the crisis of meaning. When you're here, you're low. You're like, you start questioning everything. Maybe I shouldn't play hockey anymore. Maybe the coach really doesn't like me. Maybe I should go somewhere else next year. Hey, mom and dad, where can we go next year? The coach is not playing me. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Our team's not winning. I'm going to go to a better winning team next year. You start having all these different thoughts going through your head, left and right, left and right. You keep talking to yourself because we have conversations with ourselves all the time. And it's the conversations in your head that drive everything. So when you're here, what do you need to do? Come on. Like turn a switch to like make it more positive. Okay, how? We just went through it. Okay, how? CT far. Connecticut's far. What am I saying to myself? And as soon as you catch yourself, think about, let's use a baseball analogy, Cam. So, change the sport up. I'm a batter, okay? I've gone zero for 20, my last 20 at bats. What is on my mind the next time I go up to bat? What? I'm zero for 20. I hope I don't strike out again. What am I going to do? I'm a hockey player. Okay? I hope I play well today. I hope I don't screw up. I hope my team does well. I hope we don't lose by too many goals. What kind of language is that? Horrible. You are what you say you are. You are who you say you are in your head. If you go into today's game, you know what? Let's pull this thing together. We are going to kick their butts. Let's go. Everybody's on the same way. Everybody's fired up. By the way, guys, the 019, that's exactly what happened to you guys. You guys were all here. You went out and kicked some butt. The 08 team, when we had those conversations, you were all here, and you went out and kicked some butt. Because what happened? Here, let me ask you a question. Do all of you follow the same path? Ah, right? So player one is going this way. Player two is going this way. Player three is going that way. Player four is going that way. You're all over the place. So once in a while, it takes leadership, whether it be the coaches, whether it be you guys, or whether it be a speaker or something, to bring you all together and go, you know what? Let's go. 
Let's get everybody here up here. Let's all have this positive thought and mindset. Somebody next to you is like, yeah, I suck today. No, no, hey, CT far. let's go. Have the same language because your actions will deliver your result. And the actions are from your feelings and your feelings are from your thoughts and your thoughts are from the circumstance. Does that make sense? Okay, again, this is how it works. So what ends up happening is you start giving yourself better messages and which way will you go? This way. What happens if you don't? I call that a CAC. That's a CAC. Right? There, there, are, there are players that just, you know, in, in hockey, they're business people in life, they jump around from job to job. They jump around from, you know, hockey team to hockey team, trying to chase, chase it because in every situation, in every circumstance, they had negative thoughts and negative feelings and negative, you know, on and on and on that led to them getting the wrong result. Because the result you control. I want to repeat it again. How do you control your result? Let's go, let's, we got to do it backwards. Connect CT far. How do you control the result? Louder. Actions. What controls your actions? Your feelings. What controls your feelings? And what controls your thoughts? So whenever you're not getting the right result, use your spa education and start working backwards. Why am I not getting the right result? Well, maybe I'm not doing the right things. What do I need to do? Maybe I need to ask Mr. St. Pierre in the hallway to have a conversation with me. Maybe I need to go talk to another coach, not my coach. Maybe Coach Harding can help me on something because my coach maybe doesn't, maybe he can help me communicate. Maybe I need to go knock on the coach's door. Maybe I need to go do extra skill sessions. Maybe I need to speak with a teacher about my math work. You need to do something different because whatever you're doing is not working, Mick. It's not working. So figure it out. What actions do you need to take to get some more power play time? And by the way, it may not happen this year. But guess what? It may happen in a few years. Right? I mean, let me, I'm going to put my own son on the spot. Deke, you played with Max for how many years? How many years? Six, Six years. Okay. The five years before this year, how much power play time did Max have? A lot, not a lot, never? Not a lot, right? On and off. But now he's working on it. He didn't get it that, right, that year, but now he's, he's getting an opportunity. Still got to prove himself. Right? Same thing if you're a goalie. Are you the number one goalie, number two goalie? Well, you may not become number one goalie right away, but if you work at it, you may get there. It doesn't happen right away because life is a journey. It takes a longer time to, to move up the ladder. Yes, Kurt. Okay, so CT far transition curve. Okay, I want to just finish this up. You start doing better, you get here. What's that? Informed pessimism. What does that mean? That means I know that the person next to me may not be my best friend, but I accept him for who he is. I know that the cafeteria food on Wednesdays serves this food, and I don't really like that food, so I'm going to figure out another solution. Even though you may not like things, you understand it now. You understand what's going on. You understand the method to the madness. Because guess what? Not everything in life you're going to love. But you figure out how to deal with it. You figure out how to work around it. You, you're informed. And then you get to informed optimism. And this is where you want to be. This is where you want to be at the end of the season. Because this is going to go like this. You want to be here. This is going to happen multiple times. It may happen to you multiple times today, it may happen to you multiple times this weekend, but throughout a season, you're going to go up and down and up and down through life. You're going to go up and down and up and down all the time. And the science of success is the best instrument you have. It's not your hockey stick, believe me. I don't know why you guys think it's your hockey stick. I need a new stick. I need a new... It's here. This is the best instrument you have, but no one knows how to use it. 
And even though I shared all this with you guys, only 5% of you are actually going to take something to do with it. And that's good. I'll work with the 5%. Okay? Um, there's, there's, a, there's a book that may be a little too much to read, but I would encourage the, it to add to the curriculum at some point. It's the best-selling self-help book of all time. Of all time. 100 million copies, everything. And anybody I speak to that's achieved success in life, billionaires, big successful people, athlete, whatever, they all have read this book. Does anybody know what it is? Any guess? It's called, yeah? No, no, no. It, it's called Think and Grow Rich It's by Napoleon Hill. And it was written in like 1930. Okay? Think and Grow Rich. What does rich mean? Some of you know what rich means? Some of you know what rich means. What does rich mean? No, I'm not thinking of you, somebody else. A lot of money. Okay, that's what you would automatically think. Right? Having a lot of something. Ah, a lot of something. What can you be rich in other than money? Uh, health. health. What else? Knowledge. What? Knowledge. 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 What else? Happiness. Happiness. You can be rich in everything. But guess what? Think and grow rich is not about money. But everybody thinks it's about money because of the word. It's about think and grow and achieve all of your life's dreams and visions and everything else. But where does that start? What's the secret in the book? I'll, I'll tell you the secret right now because you guys probably aren't going to read the book. What's the secret? Failure. No, secret's not failure. The secret is how to use the best instrument you've ever been given. And even though people read the book, they still don't know what to do because the secret's not in the book. The guy who's the secret just doesn't tell you the final secret. I just told it to you guys today because it took me many, many, many years to figure it out. I've consulted with the world's best. I now know the secret. It's CT far, understand the transition curve, know where you are and how you talk to yourself. Every minute, every day, for 12 minutes, I talk to myself. What do you think I say to myself? You suck. You can't do this. You, ever, you think I say that kind of stuff? No. I want to be the best father. I want to be the best husband. I'm going to be the best business partner. Here's where I want to be. I'm going to go work out today. I'm going to eat better. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I, I talk to myself 12 minutes. I have a script. I literally talk to myself. What do you guys do before your games? Listen to some music that doesn't mean anything? Do you talk to yourself before you go out on the ice? What are you saying to yourself? When you go play this afternoon, what are you going to say to yourself in the locker room before the game? What are you going to say to your teammates before the game? Because the words you use, coaches, same thing. The words you use mean more than you think. You walk in the locker room, tell your team they suck, they do suck. And they're going to go suck again. Doesn't work. You don't lift somebody up by telling them they suck. Who's a good teammate in here and who's a bad teammate? Who criticizes their players for not passing the puck? And who pats them on the back and says, hey, let's, let's, let's keep working on this. I'll, I'll, I'll yell a bit louder. If I'm on the side, I'll, I'll yell louder. We're going to get this thing. We're going to score next shift. Much different. And I'll tell you what. If you have some bad teammates in your locker room, figure it out. Because your, team, your, your team's going to go, woo. You're only strong as your weakest link. Teams that win championships bring their whole team together to this point because everybody's going to struggle and everybody's going to need to have a friend or a teammate to go, we got this. CT far, buddy. Let's go. What do we need to do? Let's help. Help each other. Right? If you want to think and grow rich, you need to understand the secret of this. And I'm not talking about rich in money. I'm talking about rich in life and everything else you want to achieve. So here's another last piece that I'm going to give you guys. I just said it out loud with my 12 minutes I just talk about every day. Here's what I do every day, okay, that you guys can do before every game. By the way, who, who, who's playing with AI right now? Anybody playing with artificial intelligence? Have you done, have you done some cool things? Yeah, so yeah. I, what have you done? Anything cool? Uh, like kind of, I don't know. Okay. If anybody wants to see it, I've done some really cool stuff with AI. I literally can write a script I have the AI who can talk in my voice, and if I want to, I could say, write me a song, here's the script, and it will sing the song in my voice to whatever beat I want. This AI stuff, guys, is crazy. If you guys really want to get ahead in life, start figuring out what's going on in that world, because it's a lot of fun and it's crazy. 
but you have to talk to yourself, okay? And here's what I do every day, okay? I envision in detail with emotion on a daily basis who I want to be. Every day. You could do it every day. You could do it before every game. You could do it whenever. You could do it never. I don't really don't care. But this is what I do every day. My life, my health, my business, my family, every, every day. What do I want in every single segment of my life? That's who I will become. Because what you train by doing that is you're training your what? What are you training? What are you training? What, kind, what side of your brain? Who said it? Say it louder. Subconscious. The subconscious part of your brain gets trained when you talk to yourself every day in a routine. How long does it take to create a habit? Huh? How long, exactly? Close. How many? All right, getting closer. 21. 21 days. If you tell yourself and talk to yourself 21 days on whatever you want in life, it will just start happening. I want to eat better. I want to eat better. I'm going to eat better. I want to be healthy. I want to be a rock, man. I want my abs. Just whatever. It doesn't matter. Talk to yourself like that every day. On the 22nd day, when you go to the cafeteria, you'll be like, yeah, I don't think I'm going to do the pizza today. I'm going to do this because I want to be better. You're training your subconscious mind. You don't have to think about it anymore. What we're doing right now is teaching you how to train your subconscious mind. Because if you envision in detail with emotion on a daily basis who you want to become, you will become. Pretty simple. That's the big secret. CT far is a strategy. But this is the big secret. <coughs> so if you want to play your best today, what do you need to do in the locker room as opposed to screwing around? Listen to shitty music. What do you need to be doing? Envision in detail with emotion who you're going to go be on that ice. Phil Vabro may be the best example of this. When he's in the zone getting ready for a game, you guys know it, you can't even lock him out of it. He's watching his clips of Vasilevsky or whatever, and he's visualizing himself making that save. When the puck comes at him, do you think, do you think he says, I'm going to put my blocker out and push the puck over here? Does he, does he do that or just do, does it? Does, does it? When Tom Brady gets the snap and he's got like all these people coming at him, is he like, well, let me think here. What do I need to do? No, his subconscious mind takes over. Boom, he sees the guy, bang, gone. Doesn't think about it. It's all subconscious. When Timo takes his one timer, he's like thinking about, oh, here comes the puck, and I'm going to do this. I give everybody my right position. Or he's just like, bang, it's gone. Because it's, it's trained. Subconscious mind. You train your subconscious mind. Okay. So I told you guys earlier that I have a winning record. Okay. Here's my promise to you guys. Okay. If every team wins their next game. I'm all going to give you a copy of my book, OK? If every team wins, if one team loses, you're out, OK? And it may be too hard for you guys to read everything in here. There's like financial stuff in here, and there's like a lot of stuff in here. But someday you may pick it back out and go, I need a refresher on what we just talked about, because some of that's in here, OK? But today, I'm going to give this book to somebody. And the person I want to give this book to in my opinion, and I don't know all of you, so I'm a little, little biased. I apologize. I hope to get all you guys, know all you guys. I'm a little biased. But there's somebody here that I've seen exemplify what I just talked about today. They control their emotions. They're always working out what they want to do. The CT far, in my opinion, is sharp. Whatever the circumstance is, they have the, they have the right thoughts, the right feelings, the right actions, and the right result and they keep going like that, right? And you may know who this is, you may not know who this is, but it's an example of leadership, and it's an example of using the instrument for success, and they're gonna go really far in life because of it. And they're probably one of the 5% that listened to everything I just said. Sully.
It's an example. Be an example. Be a leader and use the tool. And just be conscious when you start having the wrong feelings and the wrong actions, just know you're not going to get the right result because of it. Got it? Guys, girls, absolute pleasure to speak with you guys. I'm gonna, I've recorded this for a couple of reasons, but one of the reasons is you can go back and rewatch it. And you may rewatch it next week. You may rewatch it next month. You may rewatch it next year. You may rewatch it five years from now. Because life is ups and downs. And it's how you get up when you're struggling that actually determines your success in life. Period, end of story, full stop. Got it? Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.